Narration fixation number 10 with Mike Hathaway from stage to microphone. All right, Mike, um, well, tell us about the stage work you've done here locally. Oh, well, um, just locally, it, 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 it really is recent. Um, I had a, a huge gap where I was doing nothing but uh, street theater and acapella singing, and I just got back into stage work in uh, 2009. I've been lucky enough to do a lot of regional and even some world premieres. Uh, and just in the last year, I've gotten to do some big bucket list roles like the musical Assassins, uh, classic Tony Ward winning play Death Trap. Um, one that I didn't know was a bucket list and turned into one, uh, the farce uh, Fox on the Fairway. So I've, I've done everything from... You know, serious musicals to fluffy musicals to fluffy stage shows to <laughs> big time drama, and just having a blast doing it all. Okay. Well, so what? Uh, so what's gotten you into voice work? Honestly, uh, about gosh, I guess it was ten years ago. I was in uh, video production for a little while, doing editing, and the first feature length documentary I worked on was called Invasion Anime, and it was about the history of Japanese animation, how America influenced that back in the 20s and 30s, and how now, you know, Japanese animation is turning around and influencing American culture and entertainment today. So I got to meet a lot of not only the Japanese artists and writers uh, and producers, but also a lot of the American voiceover actors, and they all acted like they were having a lot of fun. Uh, and one of the biggest, uh, if not maybe the biggest, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, dubbing houses here in the country that takes the Japanese productions and overdubs it with English or even does subtitling for DVD and television re uh, releases here in North Texas. And I've been trying to crack that nut uh, for a good five or six years now because... <laughs> People keep telling me, oh, you've got such a great voice. You should do radio. You should do this. I'm like, I'm trying. It's not exactly just, hi, I'd like to be in your show, and you get in. Uh, so they finally had an open call just a little over a month ago uh, looking for actors because originally they had been keeping a waiting list off their website, and what they discovered is that they were getting a whole lot of anime fans who weren't necessarily actors or you know, could perform their way out of a paper bag. Right. So they opened it up to the DFW theater community and said, hey, come audition, and I did, and uh, gosh, I guess it was not even a month later that they called me and uh, said, hey, would you like to come do some stuff? So I did some background, uh, hang on, I'm getting pop-ups from Google here. <laughs> uh, so I did some background uh, noise for a, a, a fight and a couple of little character lines, uh, and then I'm just so, going in this next week to do another hour solo work, so it's it's cranking. So what did you call that background work on your on Facebook? <laughs> you know, this, uh, a hilarious term for that. <laughs> set, set that up for us. Do it without the video portion. It would sound uh, like something out of a gay porn uh, because it was a, a fight between these space marines and pirates, and all we were doing was a whole lot of ah uh, ah. Uh, Oh, my weapon! Where's my gun? Oh. <laughs> it's just a whole lot of grunting and moaning and groaning. <laughs> and just the whole time I'm doing this, I'm like, I'm getting paid <laughs> to do gay porn orgy noises <laughs> for a fight scene. <laughs> there you go. So you said you've done some other... Um commercial voice work that's not uh, not animation? Yeah, uh, uh, several years ago, and I thought this was going to be my big break. It turned out to go, you know, nowhere. Uh, I got to do some narration for a couple of documentaries. Um, unfortunately, not that one about the anime, because the story just carried that one. But I was, I was like, because that played in 12 different countries over the course of five years, and I was like, oh, that would have been great! Uh, but no, it was some local, uh, local history documentaries. Uh, uh, did a couple of radio commercials. I did the voiceovers for the, the group that I used to perform with. We were, the at the time, the largest a cappella Christmas caroling group uh, 
And so we would run radio spots uh, advertising that. So hear that? That's the sound of an authentic Victorian caroling group. Uh, and then uh, for a couple of years, I was a guest host for a, a, a local radio show on KNON. So it's like I've been I've been dabbling in it for years, but it's finally just, you know, now it's really kicked off. Okay. Good. So is um, <clears throat> that Christmas caroling group? Is that what led to some of those? Christmas time jobs that I've seen you post about. It. Yeah. <laughs> no, actually, the funny thing is, um, for anyone who doesn't know me personally, I've, I've managed the Santa photos set for uh, a couple of balls over the last few years, and people are always like, "Well, you're awfully young to play Santa, or you know, you're not big enough to play Santa." I don't play Santa. <laughs> I, just, I would just manage it. Like you're too tall to be manager. an elf, right? <laughs> yes, exactly. No, that actually came about. I was just desperate for a job and replied to an ad. Okay. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's, it just seemed an odd connection there. So I yeah, it was. It was. It's, it's my life has always kind of revolved around Christmas. It's it's bizarre. It's always been well, Halloween's officially my favorite holiday, but uh, oh, okay. Christmas is always like parallel or a close second. And yeah, it's 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 there. So what, have, so what have been some of the obstacles to getting to moving into voice work from? The other stuff you've been doing. You know, honestly, it's 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 almost like any other job these days. Of it's it's not what you know, it's who you know. Um, and and just honestly, it, it, I got lucky this time, paying attention uh, to local audition notices and saw that. Uh, and it was obvious they weren't just doing an open cattle call because they were scheduling audition times on very specific dates. And it was just for men this time. Uh, so that said to me, they were only looking to audition, you know, maybe 10 people a day because it was 30 minute time slots. Uh, and I thought, okay, it's, it's now or never to get into this because, you know, it, it, as any working actor in Texas can tell you, it's not easy to get a good agent. And oh, even right. then, even after you get a good agent, which I don't have. Hi, I'm available. Anybody offering representation? Um, and even after you get that, you're up against 100, 200, 300, you know, maybe a thousand other people in your region also looking for work. Uh, and I was reading something I think it was on Backstage uh, magazine the other day that for like the the six qualities that voiceover casting directors are looking for these days, and it used to be, and, and, and I think this is where maybe one reason it's kind of taken me so long because I do have that more voice of authority and, and that that very classical, you know, kind of fifties and sixties tone. Uh, which isn't what people want anymore. It used to be, they, you know, it's just like with the newscast, they were saying that um, people wanted that voice of authority to to tell them what was going on and tell them what to think and what products to buy and what movies to go see. And now they don't, people don't want that because that's too authoritarian. They want they want the guy next door, you know, well, the buddy also, you'll have a beer with. There's, there's been a big rise in, like, the charming older gentleman, like the the uh, smartest man in the world type of guys. There's, there's, there was exactly. an interesting uh, German commercial that was had a similar type of guy. Yeah, and and uh, they were saying that that younger voices were really on the rise. And oh, yeah, I know and you that, can't <laughs> can't compete yeah. there, uh, you know, too long. So. <laughs> exactly, because I, I was noticing uh, uh, like the the radio commercials that have been running lately for Hertz. You know, they're they're known for their car rentals, and now they've started sales as well and you've got this hyperactive little chipmunk sounding guy hurts sells cars okay calm down <laughs> but there right. seems to be a whole lot of that sort of where things are going uh, and I was kind of scared when I went in for my uh, audition for Funimation that that's really a lot of what they were going to look for which I can do that you know I've got a range of voices and stuff I can I can throw out but uh Maintaining that, oh dear God, <laughs> that's a whole other story. Yes. Yeah, that's been something I've had to deal with uh, during audiobooks. It's just like, 
man, consistency on trying to nail that voice the next time that person appears, you know, eight chapters later. Well, and that's that's uh, something else because I've, I've always found that a very fascinating uh, concept to get into of doing, you know, full novel-length audio books, but that it honestly kind of scares me because, like you said, picking that, that character voice and then maintaining that precisely through the entire production uh because they, they warned us with the, the Funimation stuff that, hey, you may just do four lines here, but this character may re reappear ten episodes down the line. Oh, yeah. I'm afraid. <laughs> this is all I hate is to develop something <laughs> and not be able to pull it off again. So, yeah, well, but one way I got around that one time was one author <clears throat> just hated all my unnatural voices. <laughs> oh, your natural voice is great. Just do that for all the voices. But make them all sound different. Yes, yes. So I just I just found all the lines for that character and recorded them all at once at one time of day, and then another day at another time of day I would do another character's voices. So they all sounded a little different because, you know, it was a different time of day and it was a different day and I was in a different mood or whatever. So, but that character was always consistent throughout the book. <laughs> it was just a lot more work because you had to drop in all the bits in the right places. Yes. And then just make sure you smoke and drink a lot the night before to <laughs> the Janis Joplin school of acting. <laughs> there you go. So uh, what advice do you have for anybody that's trying to break into this field, whether whether it's in the Dallas area or anywhere? Because you know, we have a slightly global reach here on YouTube. Uh, yeah. Um, honestly, it's, it's sort of... Um, well, obviously, you know, keep your eyes peeled for any any opportunities. Um, I I I don't think there's a whole huge range of difference between um, learning what you're doing on stage or film, and then taking that over, uh, especially with with stage acting, because you can't rely on your face so much with stage acting as you do with film acting. So you've got to learn how to put a lot through with your voice because somebody sitting 300 feet away at the back of the house, you know, if you're playing, fortunate to play some big theater, uh, they're not always going to see your facial reactions. So they've got to be able to hear that, hear the story in your voice, um, which is obviously it's exactly what you need for voice work. Uh, but I, I record yourself a lot. Just even if even if you're not working as an actor, pick a short story and narrate it into a microphone. Read it back and and see. Are you really giving different levels and different characters? Or I know a lot of times I'm really guilty of thinking, oh yeah, that was radically different. And no, <laughs> it just sounds. Right. It's like yeah. Um, and just and and work on things like your diction and. Pulling back, because I know um, for a long time I would drive audio engineers nuts because I, my, my filament ethics were just <laughs> a little too much. I, w I, would, I was uh, over-enunciating on some stuff, but I've learned to pull back a little bit. You know, punch, punch the T's and P's a little bit, but not to the point just, <laughs> just like you are on stage. <laughs> oh, yeah, well, yeah, because... If you're having to an, an instinct for the stage, that is a little bit different, I suppose. Yeah, and one thing, and I, I'm so guilty of not doing this. That this is one of those, you know, do as I say, not as I do moments. Uh, but get your hands on some radio scripts, and oh. you know, and build your own demo reel, especially if you know somebody that has uh, some fairly decent sound equipment who can layer in music or background noise and things like that. Uh, that was one thing I always intended on doing, but I never could or uh, never took the time to do. Uh, so now I'm desperately scrambling around trying to piece together things to come up with a demo reel because I've lost so much <laughs> of the original uh, material, especially on the, the commercials and, and documentaries and things like that. Um, but I'm hoping to be able once these episodes of this series that I'm working on air, 
even though it was just three lines. Hey, it's three lines. That's a, that's about thirty seconds <laughs> I could put into a demo reel. <laughs> um, but yeah, just just uh, and, and play and listen to people and listen to what's hot on the radio uh, and and TV commercials and 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 learn that style. Just because my, my other end of business is I do graphic design. I know I'm not an Ed Hardy, you know, kind of designer. I don't do all that multi-layered, distressed, ink blot, you know, fleur de lis <laughs> layered <laughs> stuff. Uh, I'm, I, I know my style, and I'm, I'm very decent at what I do. Uh, so same thing, I would never... Uh, Try to force myself into a, into a, a voice part that I know I'm just ultimately not right for. I mean, yeah. Do you still have any of your designs on like Zazzle or anything like that? I know you were selling t-shirts. Yeah, for yeah. Years. Actually, uh, and <laughs> I, I think um, this is actually a very good uh, uh, parallel here. My best-selling designs are actually the ones that um, I didn't spend a whole lot of time on. Uh, very basic stuff. Like my biggest selling stuff right now is uh, uh, wedding things that you can, and especially on mugs and and beer steins, uh, stuff like father of the groom, best man, bridesmaid, mother of the bride, things like that. It took me, I, I think I have eight or ten different wedding party titles. Yeah. Just getting the first one, you know. You, you, yeah, it, 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 the, the concept there. Just change the words. Uh, you know, some of the words are longer. Like matron of honor is obviously going to be a little bit trickier than maid of honor. Uh, but it's it's uh, those are selling like hotcakes now. The, but the stuff I went and oh, I'm going to do all this intricate layering and and texture and it's, nobody wants those. <laughs> I'm sitting here thinking, uh, and, and this is, if you're an actor out there listening to this, and this applies to you, and it's your technique, that's fine. That's what This is what works for you. What works for me is not to do all of this in-depth character analysis and, and you know, uh, uh, coming up with an entire backstory for the character is every motivation for his every movement. I, I don't do that. I look at the lines. Like, what's the most effective reading for this? And especially with the comedies, what's going to be funny? That's it. I don't have any deep process. <laughs> so just, just trip it down. There's, yes. I'm like, and so many people are like, oh, I, I, the, the, the headaches I get in, in trying to determine, you know, what sort of childhood this person, who cares? You know, really, it's like, okay, yeah, we all had crappy childhoods. We, you know, at some point, it, yes, you may have been happy, but things happen. Things happen to all of us. I, can I go back and say, because this happened to me when I was six, this is how I behave now? No. <laughs> I'm not going to go try to find that for a character either. Right, um, right. But so, like I said, if that's your process, that's great. Stick with it. If it's working for you, not something I need to do. Um basic surface level and some people when they go, well, well that's you're just a surface level actor. Well it gets me parts. <laughs> you know, I could appoint my stage career now to where um, the last show I was doing that just closed a couple of weeks ago, during that rehearsal and, and performance run, I turned down I, like no less than five shows. Because directors were coming to me going, Hey, I really need you to come do this. I'm like God Sorry, <laughs> I'm booked. Uh, this particular show I had booked for over a year because I was reprising a role that I did originally five years ago, six years ago. Oh wow! Yeah, and so the 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 director was bringing the play back because it was one of the biggest uh, biggest sellers he had, and it fit within his season. Um, so, uh, you know, that's working for me. <laughs> so I'm hoping maybe now this can translate over. Uh, you know, I've gotten two two calls now from from the anime company uh, in less than a month. So Very good. I guess I'm doing something right there, too. Uh, and they paid you already, so that's good. Yes, yes, I got my first check. <laughs> so, 
and I won't say how much it is, but I will just say, you know, you don't go in and work, like this was two hours, my first gig was two hours, my one coming up this week is one hour. Um, but it's it's well worth the 40 minute drive <laughs> in, in, into their office. Because this is uh, a royalty check, right? You're going to keep giving this no, checks, right? No, no this that's is a just it's, it's, it's a one. Now, that's for the background Oh, right. and, and like one-off character, I don't know if the the folks that are uh, doing the main characters get royalties because like the the series I did, um, it's called One Piece, and it's the longest running anime series in Japan. They're on like episode number eight hundred, nine hundred, something like that, um, and we're only on. I think the episode I shot was like in the upper three hundreds. So, so several years behind. Yeah, yeah, and 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 there's a new movie coming out that I think oh, is like okay. the third feature length movie for this series. Um, so I don't know if the folks who do the uh, the main characters get residuals. Okay. I haven't actually explored that. I, it's one of those things I'm just kind of sitting back going, "Thank you." Yes. He's calling me. <laughs> 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 I didn't even ask how much the gig paid when I got it. I reached out to my friends who had already done it and said, you know about how much I'm going to make for this? <laughs> they were like, yes, you're going to get paid. And so I was like, okay. I, I assume the main characters make more. Or maybe they make the same and just work more hours. Because um, the stuff I did is for broadcast, you know, a Cartoon Network, uh, it airs on Adult Swim. Oh, really? Yeah, okay. and so they run it, um, you know, two, three, I think I think they run like two episodes a week and they'll repeat them a couple of times. So yeah, it's it sucks that there's no residuals on this. I wish, that's why I keep hoping. Let me get a national commercial, just, just, just one. Yeah, just get residuals. Because I've been, you know, chronically unemployed since um, uh, December 2008 when I lost my cushy corporate job, which is actually what pushed me back into acting. Oh, okay. And so I the acting time, and stuff you know. before that was just a hobby. Yes. Yeah. And now it's still I don't because a lot of the stage work I do, you know, unfortunately in Dallas Fort Worth, stage work doesn't pay you much. You know, even if you're an equity actor, there's only six or seven equity houses in Dallas. Well. You got a couple hundred equity actors running around DFW. They're all jockeying for a position there, as well as having to go out to Oklahoma, Arkansas, Louisiana, down to Austin, Houston, San Antonio. Uh, you know, uh, there's just not enough stage work here in North Texas to sustain a working actor. So you have to get into doing voiceovers and being willing to travel to go, you know. To the contiguous states and and down to Austin and you know do things like that, which is kind of sort of what I'm resigning myself to. It's like okay, get get, get some more miles on the car, and here we go. So how much of that have you done? Uh, not a lot yet. Uh, it's it's one of those I, I I don't I won't say I've wasted my time looking for a regular job again, but. I've wasted the last four years looking for a regular job again, and because I don't have a degree to back up my experience, that's, and I've got too much, you know, it's, I'm such in a rock and a hard place yes. moment, because I've, I've got more experience in, than probably most people with deg a, a degree have, but I can't get my foot in the door because I don't have a degree, but because I have all this experience, nobody's going to hire me for a lower position because they think, oh, he's just going to get bored and leave, it's like, no. I need a job. <laughs> what part of this are you not understanding? Right. So, so again, if there's if there's anyone with job openings, I have experience in marketing and communications. Just saying. Because um, you know, you, what gig did you didn't you just land a new gig this week? Oh, <laughs> just to make some money, I am um, I'm playing a polar bear. At a fashion show for J.C. Penney, so I'm, go I'm going to rock the walk the runway as a polar bear. Okay. In August. <laughs> in, in August. In so August. Where, where else? <clears throat> where, where else can people find you, live and in person or on the internet? 
Uh, well, on the internet, uh, I, I I do have. Uh, and people laugh at me for having this. I do have a fan page uh, on Facebook. It's Mike Hathaway Actor. Um, okay. uh, so you can always subscribe to that. Uh, uh, you can find me on uh, Zazzle under L L M H Designs. Um, L H M Designs, right? L M H. That's L M H. The the official, yeah, the the official monogram L M H. Um, or as the IRS once thought, I said Elements. It's like no L M H. What <laughs> you're looking at my legal name? Why? What part of this are you not getting? Uh, uh, and it, just to plug away, yeah, I just uh, my next show is at Theater Arlington. We open in September, one through October. Uh, regional premiere of a new musical called Who Done It, based on uh, a short story called The Circular Staircase. And I can't remember the woman's name who wrote it, but she was called the uh, American Agatha Christie, even though she was publishing like almost a full decade before Agatha Christie was. Oh wow! Back in the twenties, yeah. So. And will this have a different ending every every performance? No, same ending. Okay. Uh, seen it once, you know who done it. <laughs> yep. But it, it is totally silly, 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 silly show, and and, and just if if you're a fan of Clue. Yeah, we saw uh, Clue the musical at uh, in Arlington about seven or eight, ten years ago. Yeah, it's it's got the same sensibility. Yeah. The same, you know, we're gonna kind of spoof. Right. The whole Agatha Christie genre sort of thing. Uh, but no, just one ending. Okay. That sounds cool. Any last words before we wrap things up today? Uh, uh, not for me personally, but just in general, take a chance on people. <laughs> you if you're out there looking for people, take a chance on people. Don't just be pigeonholed into what you think you're looking for, because what you think you're looking for may be totally outside of the box you built. Give, exactly. give, give people a chance. Exactly. So thanks for watching. This has been Narration Fixation on the All for Geek Alliance Network. If you like other elements of storytelling, be sure and check out our other shows like Lore Explorer with uh, Jody Hall and What's the other show? The Plot Hook In with Daniel Wallace. And those are, you can catch that uh, Plot Hook In live if you check our live events on the Offer Geek Alliance channel. All right.